Saskatoon Souvenir Many of the postcards in the collection of the local history room were purchased by visitors to Saskatoon or by residents of the city to send to friends or relatives far away. In some cases, these postcards provide the only pictorial record of what early Saskatoon looked like. They form part of the almost universal desire to return from a trip with a picture or memento to remind you of the place or event visited. Today we can easily create our own digital mementos. At the beginning of the 20th century, cameras were large, expensive, and difficult to use. The demand for souvenirs by travelers and citizens resulted in local merchants selling an almost endless variety of Saskatoon scenes and points of view. The souvenir served as a reminder of a bridge, a church, a school or university, an historic building, or a popular local person or event. Once purchased, it was unlikely it would be thrown away, although it might be put away. These enduring souvenirs are understood and appreciated by both historians and collectors, and should be treasured for the very real historical picture they supply. The Saskatoon Star of June 8, 1908, called the wreck of the city of Medicine Hat with the loss of several tons of flour and other possessions, the greatest marine disaster in the history of Saskatoon. It was also the only marine disaster. The captain of the steamboat, H. H. Ross, given the exceptionally high water of the river, lost control of his boat, and it slammed into the piers of the traffic bridge. The wreck in the very heart of the city attracted immense crowds, and for a time the traffic bridge was almost impassable. On June 10, 1908, the rising waters of the South Saskatchewan had raised concern about Saskatoon's bridges. Among the trees on the east bank, the water had climbed up to the residences near the end of the Canadian Northern Railway Bridge, making it necessary for the occupants to move out. The river had spread over its banks and flooded the low-lying Moon Lake District southwest of Saskatoon, forcing evacuation of its settlers. On March 4, 1912, the Canadian Northern Railway sleeper car Kipling, bound for Regina, derailed, crashing through the northern part of the CNR bridge. When the coach had passed over about half of the span, the weakened structure gave way, and car, bridge and supports dropped in a tangled mess to the frozen river below. Twelve people were injured, too seriously. Sixteen people homeless, and a loss estimated at more than $185,000, were the results of a fire which on Monday, December 18, 1922, gutted the Saskatoon Hardware Company store, Sugarman Brothers Grocery store, and the homes of the tenants over the hardware store on 2nd Avenue South. Despite the cold temperature, thousands of spectators came and went during the early hours of the fire, attracted by the flames, dense smoke and explosions of the ammunition stored in the basement of the building. The blizzard of March 15, 1927 paralyzed Saskatoon. One of the worst storms in decades, it stopped streetcar traffic between Sutherland and the city for over 24 hours. Despite the efforts of the street railway's big plow and sweeper, the drifts on this line were exceptionally deep, requiring a good deal of hard work to clear. It took two days for service to resume. In July 1906, amidst growing competition from the Great Northern and Grand Trunk Pacific Railways, the Canadian Pacific Railway purchased 180 centrally located lots in Saskatoon. For $78,000. Construction on a new station, along with new yard facilities, began in 1907. The first train on the new line arrived from Winnipeg June 15, 1908. Saskatoon's first recorded organized horse racing 
took place on September 21st, 1887, when races were conducted under the auspices of the Saskatoon Agricultural Society. In 1905 to 1906, the first race track was built in City Park, on the city's exhibition grounds. The race track was relocated in 1909, when the exhibition grounds were moved to their current location. Aviator Bob St. Henry of the Aerial Smile and the Large Cigar was scheduled to fly his Curtis-designed pusher aircraft at the Saskatoon Exhibition in May 1911. While on a test flight, Lucky Bob lost control and crashed into the ground. The flight was delayed until replacement parts arrived. On June 2nd, St. Henry took to the air again and completed two three-mile circuits of the Exhibition grounds before landing. Although the exterior of St. John's Anglican Cathedral was completed by December 1913, the decline in real estate values and the outbreak of the Great War of 1914 to 1918 delayed completion of construction for several years. The church was not officially opened until October 1917. Architects Thompson, Daniels, and Coldhurst had designed a magnificent structure made of red cliff brick from Alberta and buff terracotta ornamentation from the Dalton Company of England. The campaign to create a war memorial to commemorate Saskatoon citizens who had lost their lives in the Great War was spearheaded by the Canadian Legion. Designed by Regina architect F. H. Portnell, the Cenotaph was unveiled on Armistice Day November 11, 1929, at its location on 21st Street near 2nd Avenue. The final cost of the war memorial was $18,769.93. The year 1907 saw association football organized in Saskatoon. Among the four teams involved in the formation of a city soccer league was the Young Liberals. In March 1907, the Young Liberals had passed a resolution in favor of entering a team for city athletics. The team competed throughout the summer. 1909 was their most successful season when they won the city championships. The Quakers, members of the Western Canada Baseball League, opened the 1914 baseball home season May 14th with the Regina Red Sox as their opponents. The event took place in the new ballpark on Avenue A, which replaced the old 2nd Avenue grounds. The fans had selected the name Cairns Field after J.F. Cairns, owner of the team and the president of the Baseball Association. The Quakers pleased the 6,404 people attending by beating Regina 6-4. The Young Men's Christian Association building at the corner of 20th Street and Spadina Crescent opened in May 1913. At the opening of the YMCA, Chairman Dr. T. A. Girling said, We want the young men of this city to use this building and enjoy it to the fullest potential. It is planned to afford physical, mental, moral exercise and instruction, and is not merely an athletic association. In the large gymnasium on the ground floor, 12 young men are captured in a gymnastic pose. Riversdale was Saskatoon's first and only outdoor public swimming pool for 30 years. Located in Victoria Park, the pool was built in 1925 to 1926 by local contractor Leon Prosesky. Often called the Avenue H Pool, the municipal pool was constructed in response to citizen demand and the dangers of swimming in the river. The original pool was rather primitive, surrounded by a sand deck and lacking a filtration system. The 1930s were the era of Saskatoon Wesley Junior Hockey Supremacy. 
Charlie McCool's Wesley organization would skate to the Western Final in the 1931-32 season. In the most successful season, the Wesleys defeated the Moose Jaw Canucks on their way to the 1935-36 Memorial Cup Final. They eliminated Trail and defeated the Winnipeg Elmwoods in both games of the series. In the Dominion Final against West Toronto, the Wesleys lost the first game 5-1 and the next 4-2. Both games were played in Toronto. Only the white heart or breast feathers of some 3,967 prairie chickens were used in the making of this feather cloak worn by Melissa Coles. Sewing the feathers by machine, Mrs. Coles began work on the cloak in 1902 and completed it in 1914. The taxidermy for the heads and wings which form the clasps on the cloak were also done by Mrs. Coles. The completed cloak was displayed at the J.F. Cairns and F.R. Macmillan department stores. In May 1919, the Chinese National League opened the King Wah Aviation Training School on the northern outskirts of Saskatoon and started training young Chinese students from Canada, the United States, and China. Under the tutelage of Saskatoon instructors, the young Chinese would learn to fly and fight for China and Dr. Sun Yat-sen. Student Zheng Oihang joined the school in the spring of 1921 and was one of the 17 airmen trained here during the school's three-year existence. The Saskatoon Boys Band traces its origins to 1917 when a number of band enthusiasts gathered in the boiler room of Princess Alexandra School and organized a band. Under the sponsorship of the Order of the Moose, Charles Cuthbert would maintain the band known as the Moose Boys Band. After the accidental death of Conductor Cuthbert in 1931, a son, Harry Cuthbert, took over the band, which became the Saskatoon Boys Band. In 1950, this organization became the Saskatoon Concert Band. Alexandra School was the first school to be built west of the railway tracks. The original four-room brick school, designed by H. S. Griffith, quickly proved inadequate for the enrollment, so an additional four rooms were added to the west side of the school in 1908. At first called the Ward II, or Riversdale School, a contest selected Alexandra in honor of Queen Alexandra as the new name for the school. City Hospital was the first municipal hospital in Western Canada. Designed by architect W. W. Lachance, the building was completed in 1909 and heralded as perhaps the finest hospital in the country. The red brick building, trimmed with cut stone, featured two full stories, as well as a basement and an alcove. The building provided for 51 beds, with an additional four in the alcove. Architect Frank P. Martin designed the new First Baptist Church at the corner of 4th Avenue and 25th Street. Dedicated December 3, 1911, the church had a seating capacity of about 700 people. Constructed of twin city brick with heavy cut stone trimmings, the church's spire stood 100 feet high. First Baptist had the city's first local pipe organ, installed at a cost of $3,500 by the Ladies' Aid of the Church. Constructed in 1912-13 to 13 during the real estate boom, the Canada Building, at eight stories, was Saskatoon's first skyscraper and the largest office building in Canada, west of Winnipeg. Businessman Alan Bowerman hired Winnipeg architect James Chisholm's son to design the structure on the corner of 21st Street and 1st Avenue in the heart of the business district. The largest and tallest building in Saskatoon before the construction of the Besbrow, the Canada Building was Saskatoon's premier structure. In 
In 1909, after Saskatoon was chosen as the site for the university, and the Brown and Valance plan for the campus accepted, a period of intense construction began. In the spring of 1910, several buildings went out to tender, among them the Administration Building and Saskatchewan Hall in stone, the Stock Pavilion in red brick, as well as wooden agricultural buildings, including the large barn. By 1913, the first buildings were officially open. The importance of Saskatoon's central location in the province and visits by increasing numbers of the travelling public are reflected in the number of hotels built in the early years. The Empire Hotel was built in 1906, followed by the Flanagan, which opened in 1908. The King George would open in January 1912, followed by the Queen's Hotel. A promise made by the Canadian National Railways to build Saskatoon a hotel was honoured when excavations began in February 1930. Designed by railway architect J. A. Archibald in the Chateau style, the Besborough Hotel was completed in 1932, but stood empty for over three years. When it finally opened on December 10, 1935, Saskatoon had its castle on the river. Saskatoon Souvenir was a gallery show in 2011, curated by Ron Jeremko, with the assistance of Local History Room staff. We invite you to visit the Local History Room the next time you are at the Francis Morrison Library.